Would you come to the stage at this time, Bud Moore? Bud, on this 23rd day of May, 2011, it's my honor to formally induct Bud Moore into the NASCAR Hall of Fame and present him with this inductee ring. Now, Bud, don't get too carried away with that because there's three payments due on it Friday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for Bud Moore. Thank you, Barney Hall, for all the kind introduction and all your friendship through the years. We have known each other and all the other honors tonight. Congratulations. It's an honor to be one of the first 10 inducted in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. It means a lot to see my contribution as a car owner recognized like this. I also thank those who stood by my side throughout the 50 years in racing. My son, Darrell, who headed up the engine department. Greg, who for many years was the team manager. And Brent, who supported the team with technical advice. Most of all, I thank the share of this award with one person of my childhood sweetheart and my wife of 64 years, Betty, always my number one fan. She supported me in so many ways. She understood the sport took time from the family and that she had to be both mother and father to the boys. She always gave her advice during the good times and the difficult times. Plus, she continued to love me through it all. Her spirit continued to be with me, our son, grandchildren, great-grandchildren each every day as we tried to live our lives through the example she set. When building NASCAR, the France surrounded himself with an individual who could assist him in laying the foundation. I happen to be one of the fortunate few involved in that project. I've been very proud of my relationship with Big Bill, Bill Jr., and Jim France. I would say that they all, always agreed with my opinion, but I always agreed with them. But throughout the years, we respect each other and our individual views. Many times, Big Bill would fly into Spartanburg to discuss face-to-face -face issues. I crawled once when Ford was going to boycott race because of the Chrysler Hemi engine that had been approved while the dying, denying Ford to run the double overhead cam motor. Bill flew to Spartanburg and asked us about running our Mercury's. Knowing that he needed us to race, I talked with Mercury who gave us the approval run. Due to this being able to run, Big Bill gave us some appearance money for his time in my racing career, career this happened. Even after Big Sur retired, when he went to Daytona, he came over in his car every day just to visit with me as long as he was able to come. With Bill Jr., my relationship was always an open one. I was one who could always walk into the NASCAR trailer user without an invitation to discuss changes that need to be made. Not only changes that need to be made for a car, but to assist other competitors. My car, car owners who were intimidated by Bill Jr. had often take come to me and take their issue to me. One thing I can say Bill Jr. was all about was best for the sport and made NASCAR what it is today. I thank each of these men building his national sporting during my years in racing. Wish Lisa, Brian, Jim France, and President Mike held in much success in the coming years under their leadership. At a time or another during my years in racing, I afforded to have built cars for 43 of our supposed most talented drivers. Many times these drivers have gone unnoticed, need time in which to grow into a man or just want to drive our cars. With, and with the induction of Dale Earnhardt, sir, last year, and Bobby Allison, and Davey Pierce being inducted tonight, make three drivers who I can say won races in their cars. I'm proud of, very proud of that. We were also blessed with dedication employed during my time as a car owner. Without these individuals, Bud Moore Jr. would not have had 50-year history, beginning when we started in 1947. Three of us from Spartanburg, Joe Eubanks, Cotton Owen, and I decided racing was a way for us to earn a living with this sport. With Joe Eubanks, Speedy Thompson, Jack Smith, and Buck Baker, we won numerous races and set many records. 
Once with Joe Eubanks running the Mod Pack car, won 20 races in a row, with 13 of those coming from one track in Columbia, South Carolina. Serving as crew chief with Buck Baker, we won the 1957 Grand National Championship. Once I became a car and a crew chief, we won the Grand National Championship. 62 with 63 with Joe Wedley, the Grand American Championship, 68 with Tiny Lund. The Trans-American Championship awarded the Ford Motor Company in 1970 with Parnell Jones and George Fomer. We also the first team in NASCAR to win four consecutive races, what was called the Northern Tour with Billy Wade driving. I was very fortunate to have major come to sponsor me throughout the years. One, however, stands above all others. Ford Motor Company, who was for 37 years, stood beside me with their assistance. We've developed many fast and durable race cars capable of winning many races. Along with the relationship with Ford came lasting friendship with Ethel Ford, who I thank for his help for so many years. Looking back, I feel like I had a hand in a lot of contributions to our sport, whether it was running the first, the small block motor, being the one who used the first two-way radio, tire testing the Goodyear Interliner, or just trying to build a safe race car. Tonight, being inducted into NASCAR Hall of Fame, those contributions are being honored. My daughter-in-law, Carol Reed, asked me how I wanted to be remembered. The answer is simple. One who made many contributions to building the sport, one whose one handshake was good as any contract, who always gave a straight answer would never should a coat either. Most of all, to be a member of the man who loves this family, this country, and the sport of racing. God bless all of you, and God bless America, and thank all of you. Thank you.